Hi guys, today we're gonna to talk about everything you need to know about light for your fiddle leaf fig. Now this is a pretty important topic because having not enough light is one of the most common problems that fiddle leaf fig owners face. And that's one of the most common reasons fiddle leaf figs decline in their health. So it's really important to give your fiddle leaf fig enough light. For a fiddle leaf fig, not having enough light would be like us not eating anything for a month or sitting in a room without oxygen. They absolutely need sunlight to have energy to do photosynthesis, which is their metabolism. And so they cannot do their other functions like growth, protect themselves from disease, basically live without an abundance of light. And so that's why it's so important to give your fiddly fig enough light in your home. Now it's important to realize that most fiddly figs are grown in greenhouses, which are basically 50% of full sunlight. So they're commonly grown in sunny areas like San Diego and Florida, and they're in these greenhouses that are basically a bit shady to protect them from the hottest rays, but they're very, very bright. So when you bring your fiddly fig home, from a store or a greenhouse and you put it inside your home, you're probably decreasing from about 50% of full sunlight to a quarter or maybe less than a quarter of sunlight. So that's already gonna be a big hit to your fiddle. So you're gonna wanna put it in the sunniest location of your house to make sure that that change is a bit more gradual and to let your fiddly fig acclimate to having a bit lower light than it really wants. Another thing I will say is that it's probably easier to transition a brand new fiddly fig from a greenhouse or a grower to your home in the brighter months of the year. Maybe if you buy a new fiddly fig in the spring or summer, you're gonna have more sunlight in your house than in the winter where they're gonna have more of a shock and they're not gonna be as happy. Basically, these plants don't like change, right? So if they're growing in the wild, they're stuck in one spot and nothing is gonna change in their growing conditions. So when we bring them home or move them or change their conditions, they're not happy. So we wanna make any change as gradual as possible. So keep in mind that fiddly figs evolved in nature and they live in West Africa outdoors in full sun in the rainforest. So they like a lot of light. You really can't underestimate how much light your plant wants. Of course, you know, they can acclimate to lower light conditions, but you're gonna wanna just err on the side of putting them in the sunniest location, at least as they acclimate. So one of my favorite tricks for bringing home a new fiddle is start it in the sunniest location in your house, leave it there for a month, and then move it to a less sunny location. You can actually do this a few times. I have a fiddly fig that's growing in a pretty dark location of my home, and it doesn't get a lot of indirect sunlight but because I acclimated it slowly over several months it's doing okay there it's not gonna grow a lot bigger because it's not getting a lot of energy but it looks healthy and I really like it in my home in that location so that said you can't put a fiddly fig in a location in your home that does not have a window I see a lot of people wanting to put a fiddly fig in the corner of their house with no windows because that's where it looks well from a design perspective I've never seen a fiddly fig do well when it's not next to a large window that's just the way it is so maybe you could get a fiddly fig to thrive next to a smaller window or a window that's facing a shadier area but you can never put a fiddle next to two walls without a window so please don't try that unless you have big skylights or something because your fiddle will really really suffer so we've talked a bit about how much light fiddly figs need which is a lot so what you're gonna want to do is reflect on how much light your home has and so this can be a little bit tricky if you've never thought about it before. So you're gonna wanna take a look at all the windows in your home and also the direction that your home faces. And so for example, my home faces north-south and so all the windows are either facing the south or facing the north. Of course, it depends on where you live in the world. So if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, like in the United States, for example, south-facing windows, you know, facing the equator are always gonna have more daylight than north-facing windows. And so as the sun goes across the sky in the south, of us, it's going to be shining indirect light all day long through your south-facing windows, whereas north-facing windows are basically only gonna get a reflection of the light to the north. And so it's gonna be a lot less light in your north-facing windows than your south-facing windows. So that's a pretty easy rule of thumb is if you have the option, put your fiddle near your south-facing windows. So the sun rises in the east, right? And what's interesting about the sunlight is it tends to be stronger later in the day. So if you have an east-facing window, it's gonna get nice indirect sunlight in the early morning morning hours where it's going to be a little bit gentler and then it's going to get strong afternoon sunlight in the later hours of the day and so this makes it a little bit tricky your fiddly fig is going to get relatively more sunlight in a west facing window but you are going to want to protect it a bit because no houseplants like to sit in the hot afternoon sun and so you're just going to want to have to figure out exactly where your house faces where your windows face 
And if you have, you know, west-facing windows, you're gonna wanna pull your plant back a little bit and make sure it's protected from the direct afternoon hot rays. However, if you have east-facing windows, you could put a fiddle leaf fig in direct morning sun because it's not as strong. So I would start by basically getting a compass or an app on your phone that's a compass and figuring out what direction your home faces and where your windows are facing. Obviously, most houses are not oriented directly north-south or east-west. Mine actually is, and so those are my options. South, north, west, or east. And so I put all of my plants possible on the south windows, a few of them on the north windows, a few of the plants that are a little bit lower light plants in my bathrooms on the east facing windows, but there's not a lot in the west facing windows because they basically just get scorched, especially in the summer. So you have to evaluate your options for your home and figure out what's the best. I would say probably like a southwest facing window would be the optimum spot for a fiddle leaf fig or just a south facing window. And then you also also have to factor in how large the windows are. So if we're talking like floor to ceiling windows, that's gonna give you relatively more light than a smaller, you know, maybe half size window. And so you're gonna look at the direction, the size of the window and make a decision on what is the best light for your plant. Another way to go about this process is basically doing a manual assessment of the light in your house. There's a few different ways to do this. One is with a piece of paper. And so you may have heard of the newspaper reading trick is like you should never put a house plant where you couldn't actually read a newspaper without turning on an overhead light. That's gonna be way too dark. So if your home is bright enough where you can easily read a newspaper because of the light coming in from the window, that's probably gonna be an okay place to put your fiddly fig. Another trick that I actually invented that I really like is, is the place in your home so sunny that you would move a newborn baby. So if you've ever been a mom to a newborn, you know you're always like cognizant of light hitting your baby and you will always move your baby out of the sun if it's too bright. So if you wouldn't let your newborn baby sit in the indirect light coming in from your window, then you know it might be too strong for your fiddle leaf fig too. And so just kind of be aware of how bright the light is coming into the specific spot that you're considering placing your fiddle leaf fig. So a more specific way of measuring the light in your home is to use a soil meter that has three different options, and one of them being a light meter. So we actually make one of these three-way soil meters. You can switch it over to the light interface and you can put it in the spot that you wanna put your fiddle leaf fig and see how many lumens or how much measure of light is in that space. So what I like to do with the sunlight meter is to basically take three measurements throughout the day. One in the morning, say 9 a.m., one maybe at noon, and one maybe at 3 p.m., and then tally those up to make sure that your plant is getting enough bright sunlight that it's gonna do well. Now these plants really need at least six hours of bright indirect light a day. And so if they're getting less than six hours, they're not gonna be happy, but if they're getting at least six hours, they're gonna do pretty well. So for this particular sunlight meter, a reading of 200 or less is basically low light. That's not gonna be enough. 400 is gonna be about medium amount of light. That's gonna count as like, medium indirect light, and then greater than 400 is gonna be basically bright indirect light. So if you tally up these three readings, you wanna get at least 600 or greater for your fiddly fig to be happy. So if you had 200, 200, and 200, that's maybe the minimum of how your plant is gonna be able to survive. But as long as you have greater than 600 at these three different measuring points within the day, that's probably gonna get you over the threshold of being enough light for your plant to survive. Of course, the more light your plant has, the greater it's gonna do, the faster it's gonna grow, the more energy it's gonna have towards photosynthesis and keeping itself healthy. If you really love fiddly figs, but you're realizing that your home isn't quite bright enough to have one, there is one option for you. You could use grow lights to help artificially support your plant with basically fake sunlight. So you can buy a grow light and you can put it into any light fixture. It doesn't have to be one of these like industrial looking grow lights. You could put it into a chandelier or a pendant or even just a lamp and make sure it's within eight to 12 inches of your plant and that it's shining at least eight to 12 hours a day. So it's kind of a big commitment, but it is an option if you really want your plant to do well in a dark corner of your house and maybe you hang a pendant grow light over it and you turn it on all day long. I'm not the biggest fan of that option because it's a bit too time intensive, but I have seen people that are really happy with their fiddle leaf figs growing in artificial light and they do really well. So I just wanna throw that out there. So at the end of the day, you're gonna to wanna to put your fiddle leaf fig in the sunniest location of your house while avoiding that bright, harsh afternoon sunlight. Make sure you keep an eye out 
for symptoms of sunburn because your plant can get sunburned if it gets too much bright light. So this looks like sort of a tan or a red burn on the surface of your plant. I'll insert some pictures so you can see. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your plant isn't getting too dry, too hot, or sunburned. In that case, you'd wanna move it away from that bright light. One important trick is once you find the sunniest location in your home to put your fiddle, you're gonna wanna rotate it because what happens is these plants will start to grow towards the light. And so every month or so, rotate it one quarter turn so that you get symmetry with how it's growing and that all of the leaves get really good access to bright light. All right, I hope this extensive video on lighting for your fiddly fig was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.